Hi, I'm Michael Choi, and today we're going to discuss objection handling. Okay, handling of an objection. Now, this is a formula that has uh, been around for years and years and years, and it just works. You can put it into any concern that your client will have, and it just opens it up a little bit more. It allows you to delve deeper into the situation, uh, break it up, and come to a resolution to make sure that the client's happy. Okay, and just open up their perspective, change their perspective on the whole situation because they don't know what they don't know. Okay, so here we go. So first, uh, it's thank, confirm, isolate, modify, and close. And I'll run you through each one, okay? So firstly, you thank the clients for bringing up the objection. You, you welcome it, you don't wanna put a barrier up. So thank you for bringing up that concern. Um, others have felt the same, and what we've found, or, or thank you for bringing up this concern. It's, I'm, I'm so glad that you brought that up because it's important that we know how you're feeling and what you're thinking so that we can address any concerns that you have. So thank you so much for bringing that up. And that just loosens up the client a little bit, okay? Confirm, confirm is um, asking them to talk a little bit more about the, the concern that they have. Um, so uh, I nearly said the word issue, I don't like using the word issue, concern is probably a better word to use when you're talking to the client, so tell me more about your issue, tell me more about your concern, okay? So um, when they give you the concern first, you thank them and then you say, tell me a little bit more about your, your concern with X. And what you'll find is that they will say it again, but they'll say it in a different way. But there will be similarities in the first time they said it and the second time that they said it. And that's what you need to pick up on because the similarity is the, the key root of the problem. Okay, because uh, sometimes you can misinterpret it um, based on their one-off uh, statement of their concern. Okay, so confirm. Then when you confirm it as well, you go, okay, so what I'm hearing is X and you relay exactly what they just told you. You relay word for word or as close as you can. And what that does is, once again, it loosens up and going, okay, he's listening to me. He's not here to, he or she's not listening to fight me or, 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 or make me not do my way. They're actually listening to me. So thank, confirm, get them to relay it, and then, uh, and then you relay it back to them as well. Let them know that you're listening. Isolate. Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, is this the only concern that you have? Or is there other things that you wanted me, uh, I wanted to discuss further? No, this is the only thing? Okay, fantastic. And it's important to do that uh, because you need to find out what all the concerns are and write them down and isolate them, park them. Put them on the side and deal with them one by one. Okay, so don't deal with them all at the time. So if you've got X, Y, and Z as a concern, go, okay, X, Y, Z. Okay, let's, do, let's talk about X first and, and make sure you're happy with that. And then we'll, then we'll talk about the rest. And then you go through the same process again. Okay, I select the problem. So if we could move forward on this and make sure that you're happy with your concern and that the concern no longer exists, are you happy to move forward? So that's part of isolating. Modify. Now I'll put a dollar sign here because generally speaking, modifying always comes down to the money. Okay. Um, so what I'm hearing, Mr. Vendor, is this, and you want to uh, you want to save uh, money on this, whether it be commission, advertising, or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, okay. Um, if I could show you how doing it another way can actually increase your chances of making more money, would you be least interested to know how that works? If it's a rhetorical question, the answer is always going to be yes. If I could show you another way of looking at this concern and another way of approaching this tactically, strategically, that would actually put more money in your pocket, do you think we should at least talk about it for 30 seconds? Yes, okay, well let's talk about it. Uh, and then you go for the close, and the close is description dialogue for whatever the actual concern is. So let's put, put this down and let's say it's for, let's say it's a for sale board. Say they don't want for sale board because they're in a court, okay? So, okay, thank you for bringing that up, Mr. Mrs. Vendor. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that. Oh, so they, they go, back, oh yeah, we don't, we don't want it for sale board. That's the first one. Okay, thank you for telling us a little bit more, um, telling me about that. Can you tell me a little bit more about why you don't want it for sale board? Then you'll find that open up more. Yeah, we don't want it for sale board because we don't want, uh, because it's a waste. It's, you're in a, we're in a court. Um, we're not going to sell to one of our neighbors. Okay. okay. So what I'm hearing, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, is that you don't want it for sale board because you think it's a waste of money, possibly because it's your neighbours aren't going to buy the house. Is that right? I'm thinking? Okay. Now, is that your only concern about the for sale board and the marketing, or is there other things that you wanted us to address, address and make sure you're happy with? Or is it just the for sale board? So if you you're happy with the whole uh, the way of looking at it for sale board, we could possibly move forward tonight. Okay, fantastic. Well. 
Mr. And Mrs. Vendor, if I could show you how having your uh, having the for sale board here is actually going to increase your chances and probability of getting a higher sale price, is that possibly worth talking probably for another 60 seconds to at least just uh, explore that avenue? They say yes, a rhetorical question. Okay, and then you go for the close, and the close would be, uh, say, special buyers. Special buyers are those that live in your court, um, that um, they, they might not buy your house, but their friends, relatives, neighbours are looking to buy now. They're not looking in the newspaper, they're not looking on the internet, because they're only wanting the street. They're, they're wanting a relative to come to the street. So they're not uh, active buyers, they're passive buyers that are waiting for a for sale board to go up. So if you didn't put a for sale board up there, then you could miss out on that buyer. Now that buyer is a special buyer, they're probably going kind to of pay a premium because their relative or friend lives in the street. Would you want to miss out on that client? No, you wouldn't. Okay, so thank you for Modify Close. It's a foundation to all um, handling objections and you get that in your tool belt and you're pretty well set. I hope you enjoyed, take it easy.